My name is Erin Sutton. I work at the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory near Washington, DC. I have a PhD in mechanical engineering and I work on guidance, navigation, and control for spacecraft. So those are the algorithms that tell a spacecraft where it is, where it wants to go, and how it needs to get there. The DART mission stands for Double Asteroid Redirection Test. It's the name of the first test of a kinetic impactor for planetary defense. So the goal of DART was to measurably change the orbit of an asteroid, because someday if an asteroid is coming toward Earth, we could intentionally crash a similar kinetic impactor into the asteroid to knock it off course and save Earth. So first I should define a near Earth object. So that's an asteroid or comet whose orbit brings it within 50 million kilometers of Earth, which is, uh, to give you an idea, that's closer than Mars. NASA estimates there are approximately 28,000 near Earth objects. To be classified as a potentially hazardous object, a near Earth object has to come within 8 million kilometers of Earth and be large enough to damage Earth's surface. So that's a um, asteroid or a comet in Earth's near neighborhood um, that's greater than about 30 meters. This question is very difficult to answer. There's a program called the Near Earth Object Observations Program. It's a network of telescopes which finds, tracks, and characterizes objects. So right now, scientists are tracking about 2,000 potentially hazardous objects, but they're finding more every year. Uh, yes, that's possible. So no known asteroid greater than 140 meters has a significant chance to hit Earth in the next 100 years. However, we only know of about 40% of the asteroids that size. So we've only found 40% of the asteroids that could cause devastation. In fact, there was an impact in Russia in 2013 that was approximately 18 meters. And experts say an impact like that probably happens once or twice every 100 years. Larger impacts which would cause more devastation are much less frequent on the order of thousands of years. I'm not an expert at this at all. I focus mainly, mainly on the spacecraft, but the Jet Propulsion Laboratory has a Center for Near Earth Object Studies. It maintains a really, really great website that explains how they calculate the orbit of a near Earth object and how they continuously update the object's orbit as they track it. Our estimates of the objects we know about are constantly improving and we're finding more objects every day. Well, it depends on the size of the asteroid. So assuming a impact is detected um, and the asteroid is large, hopefully we've had some uh, advanced notice of it. So hopefully we've been able to characterize and track it and we would have more than enough time to protect our planet. So it depends on the size of the asteroid. Uh, to give you an idea for the asteroid the size of DART's target, we would launch an impactor approximately six years before the asteroid was predicted to impact Earth. For a larger asteroid, we might need to know further in advance or use a different technology to deflect it. But the idea is, yes, we would have time to act. But to give you an idea of scale, the DART spacecraft body is approximately the size of a golf cart and weighs uh, 630 kilograms. It's aiming for an asteroid the size of the Great Pyramid of Giza. So there is a very, very small object traveling very quickly. So it has a lot of momentum and kinetic energy, but it's going to hit this comparatively very large, very slow object. And when it hits, the momentum is transferred into the big asteroid and moves it just slightly off course. Because of the kinetic impactor's high kinetic energy and Newton's third law of motion, we also expect a crater to be formed and a lot of rocks and dust to be blasted up from the surface after the impact. If we detect a potentially hazardous asteroid early enough, the deflection can be very small. So success would be altering the asteroid's orbit by just seven minutes, since that would make it late or early for its meeting with Earth. And also, ideally, we'd be tracking the asteroid for more than one orbit, so we'd get a good prediction of its orbit. And if it's far enough away, we can knock it just very slightly to change that orbit by seven minutes if it's a very large orbit. target is something called a binary asteroid system. So there's a little, uh, comparatively little, 160 meter asteroid orbiting a larger 780 meter asteroid. DART's goal is to impact the smaller asteroid and change its orbital period. That's how long it takes to complete one orbit of the larger asteroid. So like I said before, if we want to move something as big as a pyramid, even by a little bit, DART has to travel very quickly, which means that it steers by making small, uh, very fast movements. The asteroid is 11 kilometers away, so uh, that's 
too far for an operator on Earth to send those commands in time. So that brings me to what I think my is the coolest thing about Dart, in my opinion. So for the last four hours of flight, Dart actually guides itself. There's a camera named Draco on Dart's uh, nose, the part pointing at the asteroid, and a system called SmartNav interprets images from the camera and distinguishes between the big asteroid and the little asteroid. So it keeps the spacecraft pointing directly at the center of the little asteroid until impact without any commands from Earth. So I think that's, as a guidance, navigation, and control person, that's an extremely interesting system and the first time that autonomous navigation has been used on a space program. Uh, to answer the last part of your question, DART left Earth on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket on November 23rd, 2021 from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. DART sent data and images back to Earth right up until the impact. So we knew immediately that DART crashed into the asteroid. Um, we knew it was traveling at 6.1 kilometers per second, but we didn't know right away if we changed the orbital period like we wanted to. Scientists are still analyzing images from telescopes around the world. Um, they were pointed at the collision. And we also have images sent back from the Lichia Cube, which was a tiny Italian space agency spacecraft ejected from DART that took video of the impact. So immediately we knew that we crashed into the asteroid as we expected, but we weren't sure how much we changed the orbital period. So based on the latest data, DART shortened the orbital period of the smaller asteroid by 32 minutes, uh, which is pretty incredible considering the requirement was only 73 seconds. Our expectation was about 10 minutes and it, uh, it surpassed the expectations. So now scientists are focused on studying the momentum transfer and the ejecta uh, to figure out how we, how we got such a great performance. <laughs> when DART impacted the smaller asteroid, it was actually pushed closer to the larger asteroid, which shortened the distance it has to travel and uh, shortened the orbital period. That's how that happened. There is a European Space Agency mission called HERA, which will fly back to the binary asteroid system. It's going to take detailed measurements of the smaller asteroid to determine how much momentum transfer occurred. It will also investigate the impact crater and any remaining ejecta in the plume to learn about the asteroid's composition. I don't know of other kinetic impactor tests, but that's something uh, that NASA's Planetary Defense Coordination Office would know more about. I think this was a really great opportunity for engineers to work directly with scientists. So there was a massive engineering problem of guiding a spacecraft autonomously and the really interesting science question of figuring out what asteroids are made of. And I think this project was a really interesting um, combination of engineering and science working together and having both of their goals be very important.